we are discussing about the mechanism of gill respiration that is over. So, now come to the respiration in lungs or respiration by lungs. So, generally respiration by lungs is conducted respiration by lungs is conducted by terrestrial vertebrates. We, we also terrestrial vertebrates they have the lungs. So, most of the adult amphibians also and the amnures okay, again again you know. So, very fundamental very fundamental word one is unamnute unamnute. So, another is the amnute you know amnute. So, mostly these are the amnures these are these are actually including the reptiles we know the reptiles then birds and the mammals. So, they are oftenly called as amnute, but here the fishes and these are the fishes and amphibians are called as anamnutes. So, most of the structures which are present in amnutes are not present in anamnutes because anamnutes having some inferior structural configuration and in course of evolution the amnutes possess modified advanced structure. But in this case for example, I am taking about the respiration by lungs. So, in case of amphibia the adult amphibians also respire by lungs we know because you know the larva of the amphibia are actually aquatic, but adult amphibians are terrestrial okay? and here the reptiles birds and mammals they also respire by the lungs. So, the respiration by lungs is conducted by the amphibians which are unamnute and the amnutes reptile bird and mammal. So, the line is like that most adult amphibians and all the amnutes breathe by means of lungs. Through lungs though lungs are also present in some lung fishes. So, we know during evolution from crossopterygii fishes some lung fishes develop ok. So, they are known as dipnoe. So, dipnoe also possess lungs. So, lungs are present in amphibians, adult amphibians, lungs are present in all amnures and these lungs are also present in lung fishes ok. In an embryo, in an embryo a hollow outpushing called lung primordium arise from the ventral wall of the pharynx. For example, during development I have shown you for example, during development so this is the gut, this is the gut. So, this gut having the pharyngeal region. So, this lungs develop actually as a outgrowth of the pharyngeal region. So, this is riboticulum and this is known as long what primodium. So, this is known as long primodium and this is the pharyngeal region and this is the elementary canal. So, how these lungs are formed? In embryo the a hollow outpushing this is the outpushing a hollow outpushing called long primodium arises from the ventral wall of the pharynx. So, this is the ventral wall. So, this is the dorsal wall. So, this develop. So, it grows backward gradually this you see this grows backward. So, this grows backward and divide into two the right and left long buds. So, now during growth. So, now this develop and finally, this will become branch. So, you see this is one branch this is another branch. So, this is left and this is right two branches are there. The undivided proximal this part the proximal this is the proximal part. So, this is the distal part. So, I shall show you picture detail. So, this proximal part undivided proximal part develop into trachea and larynx and opens into pharynx by glottis just imagine. So, for example, you see so this is the primordium this primordium become divided into two lobes the left and right. So, this part remain and this part become the trachea and larynx and finally, this opens to the pharynx by glottis ok. So, now this is the development. So, later in course of time during development later boards grow posteriorly into the siloam that enter into the siloam body siloam body siloam and branch repeatedly to or repeatedly and get covered by mesoderm the lungs are covered by mesoderm. Thus, each lung 
has endodermal lining. This is the simple histology of the lung and development of the lung. So, thus each lung has an endodermal lining and an outer visceral peritoneum. Okay. In between these two, mesodermal mesenchyme having blood and lymph vessel, nerves and smooth muscles, fibers and connective tissue present. Inner endodermal epithelium of lungs raised into a network of ridges to increase the vascularized surface exposed to the action of the air. Okay. So, the surface of the lungs, the surface of each lung is vascularized so that this is exposed to the action of the air. That means, whenever air will come contact, will come in contact with that one, so that there will be great exchange of high exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So, this is the structure. So, now in this picture I want to show you the development of the lung you see. You see. So, this is the what? The primitive gut and this is the pharyngeal region of the gut. So, you see from the pharyngeal region there appears one diverticulum. So, this is known as lung primordium. Okay. So, now this lung primordium grows posteriorly you oh, see. So, now this becomes the right lobe, this becomes the left lobe. So, now it again grow, again grow and become branch. So, this is known as lung bud. So, now the when this become the lung bud at that time this become the trachea and this become the glottis which actually opens to the pharynx. Okay. So, now again each lobe develop and branch and this becomes prospective lobes and profusely branch. So, when this become profusely branch now you see. So, this becomes actually covered by the visceral pleura you see and this is the parietal pleura and this is the pleural cavity and these are the alveolar duct. Okay. So, this is the development and lobes of the lungs and how the lungs is developed. Okay. So, now in lower form, so this is all about a primitive that is a all about a preliminary idea about the lungs. Let us see, let us examine how these lungs are present in different vertebrate. So, in lower forms, in lower forms the lungs are hollow bags, lungs are hollow bags. Okay. In higher forms the ridges increase in number and unite with one another across the lumen of the lungs to convert into a solid but spongy structure with innumerable air spaces. You saw just, just I am giving one diagram you see. So, what happens? In case of higher forms, so in case of higher forms what happens? So, for example, this is the original duct and this duct become branch you see. So, this is branch again this is branch. Okay. So, again this is branch. So, a number of branchings are there and finally, this branchings are opening to one structure. So, these are the branches. So, that the inner cavity of this lung becomes solid only the outer surface is remain for exchange of gases. Okay. So, in higher form the ridges increase in number and unite with one another across the lumen of the lung to convert it into a solid and spongy structure with innumerable air spaces. Okay. The original duct which actually forms the original duct of the lungs which that is the connecting the pharynx of the lungs become the trachea in most of the animal. So, this become the trachea. So, this is the trachea you know. So, this is the trachea. So, trachea. So, in many tetrapod, in many tetrapod the anterior end of the trachea becomes modified into larynx. So, in case of tetrapod the anterior end of the this part of the trachea becomes modified into larynx or that is known as sound box which open to the pharynx by a glottis. Okay. So, you just you just see. So, I am giving one diagram here just one rough sketch so that you can catch this one very easily. So, for example, you see. So, this is the this is the trachea. So, this is the trachea. Okay. So, this is the trachea and now this trachea is divided into two branches. So, this is known as each one is known as bronchus. Okay. Now, each bronchus is again divide and re-divide to form a number of ducts and finally, this is covered by the air sac. And now, you see this is the trachea. So, this trachea having some a part of this trachea become the larynx. So, this is known as 
larynx and this opens to the what? This opens to the pharynx. So, this is the our pharynx, pharynx region which is guarded by one structure that is known as glottis. Okay. So, this is regulated or opening of the larynx is regulated by a cartilaginous structure that is known as glottis. Okay. So, in many tetrapod this happens. At the, at the lower end, the trachea divides into two bronchi I have written here and each one enters into the lungs. So, now the bronchi that means each bronchus or two bronchi divide to form an immense system, an immense network, immense system of bronchioles. So, now this divides into bronchioles. So, first what happened? This is bronchus. Now, this bronchus divides into bronchioles. So, these are again what? Division of the bronchus, division of the duct. So, the bronchi divide to form immense, numerous system of bronchioles carrying air into minute bags or alveoli. So, they are again opening to some structure or this is known as alveoli. So, if this is the bronchus and this is the bronchioles and bronchioles will again divide and finally, this will be terminated by one structure that is known as alveolus and a lot of alveolus constitute the alveoli. So, the alveoli have very thin walls invested with blood capillaries. Okay. An exchange of gases occur in the alveoli. You just I am giving one diagram here. So, if this is the unit of the lung that is known as alveolus, you see this is the alveolus, this is one unit. So, now this is the blood capillary, you see this is the blood capillary. So, this is the blood capillary. So, now this is for example, so this is for example entering of oxygen through this capillary, oxygen is entering into this one. So, now this is alveoli and this contain carbon dioxide, okay, this is carbon dioxide. So, when the oxygenated blood actually circulates above this one, so at that time what happens? Oxygen present in this one, oxygen, this is oxygen. So, oxygen present in this blood will enter into the alveoli or alveolus and carbon dioxide will come to the blood circulation. So, that this blood will contain the carbon dioxide. Okay. So, this is the function of alveolus. So, what happens? The alveoli have very thin wall. So, this is the wall. So, the alveoli have very thin wall invested with blood capillaries and exchange of gas occur in alveoli. Okay. So, this is all about the structure. Then come to the larynx. The upper end of trachea enlarge, especially in frog and toads to form the larynx or sound box in which the vocal cords are present, larynx having the vocal cords. So, what happens? So, as the larynx is a structure having the cords, so whenever air comes out through that cords, at that time that cords vibrate. So, the vibration of the cord creates sound so that this is known as sound box or sound producing organ. Larynx is not more developed in reptiles. So, in case of frog the larynx is well developed, but this larynx is, larynx is not well developed in case of reptile. Larynx is not sound producing organ in bird, larynx is not sound producing organ in bird, but it serves to modulate tones that originate in the strings. In case of bird, what happens? The larynx is not well developed. So, this is not well developed and this larynx is not a sound producing organ, rather in bird this is known as syrinx. So, syrinx is the syrinx, this is known as syrinx, syrinx, syrinx. So, so, in case of bird, the syrinx is the sound producing organ, whereas the larynx is a modulate or modulator for fine tune. Syrinx large at the lower end of trachea where it divides into two bronchi in case of bird. It is the sound producing organ for bird. Larynx is greatly developed, but in case of mammal, the larynx is greatly developed. Its walls are supported by pair of arytenoid to single cricoid and a single thyroid cartilage on the ventral surface. So, in case of mammal, in case of us, the larynx is greatly developed. The wall of the larynx, so for example, this is a box, the larynx box. The wall of the larynx box is actually covered by, supported by a pair of arytenoid, a single 
क्रिकॉयड एंड ए सिंगल थायरॉयड कार्टिलेज ऑन द वेंट्रल सरफेस ग्लोटिस में भी क्लोज एट द टाइम ऑफ स्वालोइंग और फूड और ग्लोटिस में भी क्लोज क्लोज ड्यूरिंग द स्वालोइंग ऑफ द फूड बाय ए फ्लॉप ऑफ मस्कुलर एपिग्लोटिस दैट्स व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग सो दिस इज द ट्रैकिया यू सी दिस इज द ट्रैकिया एंड दिस ट्रैकिया ओपन्स बाय वन एपर्चर दैट इज नोन एज ग्लोटिस एंड दिस इज ए फेरिंगियल रीजन ओके दिस इज फेरिंग्स सो ट्रैकिया ओपन्स टू द फेरिंग्स बाय ग्लोटिस and this glottis is covered by one structure so this is known as epiglottis so epiglottis actually regulates the opening of the glottis so whenever food material enters into the body whenever food material enters into the body at that time glottis actually is closed just i am giving one diagram you see so for example you see here so for example this is uh, this is one human case i am giving one picture so that you will be more more you will be more uh, clear about this one you just see for example you see this is one human or this is the head and you see this is the buccal cavity and this is the nasal chamber and this region is the pharyngeal so for example this is the pharynx region okay this is the pharynx region so here two apertures are there so for example this is for the or this is the glottis and this is the trachea and this is the what this is the gullet so this opening is called as gullet and this opening leads to the oesophagus which is the digestive canal and this is the trachea and this is the actually what this is known as glottis so glottis opening is the opening for trachea so this glottis is actually covered by regulated by one structure this is known as epiglottis so now what happens whenever the food is swallowed at the time the epiglottis closes the door of the glottis so that the food material cannot enter into the trachea ultimately the food material will enter into the opening of the oesophagus that is known as gullet so what the glottis does glottis may closed at the time of swallowing of food by a flap of muscular epiglottis now this will form the trachea or this will be followed to trachea after larynx we shall discuss about the trachea so trachea is a or trachea is extremely short or absent in anura in frog there is not present it is merged with the larynx to form laryngo tracheal chamber in case of frog the trachea and the larynx are become a common structure and that is known as laryngo tracheal chamber trachea is simple in reptile again this is anatomy so trachea is simple in reptile as in amphibians or may be long in long necked reptile the for example turtle it is long it is long trachea is long and convoluted in them in bird the trachea is long because bird has a well defined neck in swans and cranes trachea is longer than the neck and tracheal rings are completed in ossified trachea in mammal for example our case trachea in mammals is variable and tracheal rings are usually incomplete on the inner side because trachea is supported by some tracheal rings and that rings are c shaped they are not complete we have studied in our plus 2 classes also then come to the comparative anatomy of the lungs so how the lungs are different they found in different vertebrates so this is all about the structure of the respiratory system of the vertebrate now we shall discuss about the structure of lungs in most of the bony fishes start with bony fish so lungs so what is the difference or what is the modification of lungs in different vertebrates so in case of what in case of bony fishes so lungs so in case of bony fishes the lung is very primitive it has a primitive lung and has modified into gas or swim bladder of hy or hydrostatic organ again again the most important thing is that in most bony fishes the primitive lung has modified into a gas or swim bladder and that is also known as hydrostatic organ you have seen that whenever you are observing one fish so from the body of the fish from the coelomic cavity of the fish you can get one bladder like structure one small elongated balloon like structure and that is actually the lung so it is present in case of fishes 
in amphibians and this in case of fishes they are hydrostatic organ. So, that help in swimming, that help in floating. So, in amphibians the lungs are simple sac like structure with central large cavity. In frogs and toads the inner wall contain numerous pores lined with alveoli. So, that it increases the respiratory surface. They are richly vascularized that means, the blood supply is given. So, they are richly vascular and lined with mucous epithelium whose cells are columnar and ciliated. So, they are engaged in what gaseous exchange. So, now in reptiles, so I have discussed about fish then what amphibians then come to the reptiles. In reptiles lungs are more complex than those of amphibians with an increase in the number of internal chambers and alveoli. So, what is alveoli? This is the unit of lung and this alveoli is the site for gas exchange. I have shown you detail in drawing in, in this uh, uh, diagram. Okay. So, in lizards or in some lizards one lung is considerably large than the other and in snakes the left lung is reduced or even absent in some species. Okay. Now, consider the crocodile because you know crocodile has some extra structure. So, crocodile that means the crocodilians or crocodiles possess lungs that are quite similar to those of the mammal because you know crocodile has a four chamber heart. So, if few lizards possess diverticula extending posteriorly from the lungs resembling air sucks of the birds. In some lizards the bronchi we know bronchi or bronchus are subdivided into primary, secondary and tertiary bronchi also. Now, come to the birds. In case of birds the most important feature of the bird that is the modification of the lung or modified lung is present or highly developed lung is present. In birds the lungs are small and incapable of the great amount of expansion they cannot expand greatly. The lungs however, are connected with 9 AR sacs that means, the most important feature of bird is that. So, for example, if this is the lung, so this is for example, lung. So, this lung is connected with for example, a number of, so this is the, so this is the air sac. So, this is one air sac, this is another one, so this is another one. So, these are the reservoir air sacs. So, in bird what happens? The lungs however, are connected with 9 9 number of AR sacs, yeah, these are known as AR sacs. So, in bird, so AR sacs are present. So, AR sacs, oh, there, this is one AR sac. So, in bird, 9 number of AR sacs are there, situated in various parts of the body. The AR sacs have no respiratory epithelium, so they are not the respiratory in function, they serve essentially as reserve here. AR passes through the bronchial circuit through the bronchial circuit into the air sac and then return generally by a separated set of bronchi to the air capillaries in the lungs. So, this is most typical feature in bird and we shall discuss detail about the air sac in next session. The respiratory system in mammal, so our case the respiratory system in mammal is much less complicated than the bird because we are not aerial we cannot fly. So, we have the respiratory system but it is not complicated as mammal the as, as bird. So, in mammal the respiratory system is much less complicated than that of the bird. The primary bronchi this is our bronchi after entering to into the lungs secondary bronchi which divide into smaller and smaller bronchioles finally, terminating into alveoli or blind pockets in which there is an exchange of gases occur. In most mammals the lungs are subdivided externally into lobes that is the left lung has two lobes as right and the end that is the, the in case of mammal the left lung has two lobes and the right lung right lung has three lobes. Okay. That means, all totally five lobes are present in case of mammal. So, in most of the mammals the lungs are subdivided it is divided by septum externally into lobes the left lung has two lobes and the right lung has three lobes in men and totally four lobes in case of rabbit. Lung are simple and without lobes in whale because whale is also our mammal it is a mammal it is belonging to our group. So, in case of whale the lungs are without the lobes in case of elephant also this is without the lobes. Now, 
mechanism of respiration by the lungs. Very simple. So, in fishes, amphibians, the mechanism of respiration is the same. The floor of the buccal cavity, in them what happens? The floor of the buccal cavity, the floor of the, so for example, you see very, very, very easy. So, you just remember this one. So, what happened in case of fishes and amphibians? So, for example, this is the buccal cavity, you see, this is the buccal cavity, okay. So, this is the, for example, so not, this is not the proper diagram. So, I am just giving one diagram. So, for example, this is the buccal cavity. So, this is the actually the floor of the buccal cavity and this is the roof of the buccal cavity and this is the mouth, for example, this is the mouth. So, what happens? So, in case of them, the floor of the buccal cavity is lowered, it is lowered and water in case of fishes or air in case of the amphibians is taken then the mouth is closed. Once they are enter into the mouth, the mouth is closed. Once this is entering, so this is entered. So, due to, due to downing of the floor, the air rushes into this and the mouth is now closed. So, when the mouth is closed, what happens? Then the mouth is closed and the floor of the buccal cavity is raised. It is raised. So, due to raising of the buccal cavity, now it forces water or the air to enter into the gill clipped in case of the fishes and air into the lungs in case of the amphibians. So, in amniotes, air is taken by increasing the volume of the lungs by the expansion of the thorax. This is done by the movement of the ribs. Okay. In turtles, where ribs are fixed to the carapace and the volume of the lungs is increased by the movement of the neck and limbs. Just imagine in case of you. So, for example, myself. So, you just imagine whether the air is introduced into my body due to pressure or not. So, what happens? Whenever the ribs are expanding, so that the chest cavity is expanded. So, due to expansion of the chest cavity, what happens? The volume is increased, so the pressure is decreased. So, due to decrease of the pressure, the atmospheric air rushes. So, my dear student, remember when the chest is expanded, when the chest is expanded, thoracic cavity is expanded, the air enters. Okay? When the thoracic cavity is what contracted the air is air is coming out. So, air never enters into the buca, into the cavity by its pressure rather the chest creates its pressure. So, this is all about the respiration by gills and respiration by lungs. So, let us take a closure, let us take a break for today's session and we shall discuss in later session about the other aspect of this respiration. Okay?